Today we're going to talk about SEBL for everyone. Um, we'll dive a little bit into um, various positions within the school and um, what that can look like for social emotional behavior learning. Um, I'm Mackenzie Rydell. I am a social emotional behavior learning specialist. I serve region one and two, which is ESUs four, five, six, and LPS, and also ESUs two and three and OPS. I'll let the others introduce themselves. Thanks, Mackenzie. I'm Jill Gunther. I'm one of the other social emotional behavioral learning specialists, and I serve regions three and four, which is ESUs one, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11, and 17. Morning, Emily Arkfeld, um, third social emotional behavioral learning specialist. I serve region five, ESUs 13, 15, and 16. And my regional counterparts are on here today, Tessa and Linda. So shout out to region five. Thank you, ladies. All right. Um, just a little snippet on what a social emotional behavior learning specialist does. Um, we're a grant funded project through the Nebraska Center for Research on Children, Youth, Family, and Schools, which is um, through Nebraska Lincoln, the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, and so we get to provide professional development, implementation support, um, and really just um, anything that can help build the capacity of educators around the state of Nebraska to practice, teach, and model social, emotional, behavioral competencies among students and adults. Um, we do specific trainings um, with a systematic build out. So like exploration and planning around social, emotional, behavior learning, adult social emotional behavior learning, and then that student core and tiered support. Um, and so we um, were a free um, asset to all schools in Nebraska, and um, we're happy to help any way we can. Um, if you are interested in more about this position, you can click on the video and there's a little overview on what our job um, can look like. Um, we wanted to start with a welcoming inclusion activity. Um, you may have seen this uh, motion wheel before, um, but if you haven't, the inner uh, words are kind of those more general words you might use more often to describe your feelings. And then as you move out, there's more, um, more specific words that also describe those feelings, but just a little bit more intricately. And so um, we're going to do a Mentimeter where you can drop um, a pin where your emotion is. And so if you go to menti.com and enter in the code 66377284, then you can drop um, where you're feeling. Have somebody who's happy. We have an interested person, someone who's content. I know it's kind of funny just because like we talk about social and emotional stuff all the time, but even me, if somebody on a whim asks like, how are you feeling? I'm like, okay, what words do I know that I can describe myself without having to like pull this out? And so it really just goes to show in our society today, we don't use a lot of other words. We use a lot of those more general ones. We have someone who's energetic, Somebody stressed out. Got someone who is happy and optimistic, maybe. Thankful, oh, that's great. Thanksgiving is around the corner. A tired person, yes. We are definitely getting into that time of year. Well, for the most part, it looks like most of us are in that yellow zone, um, that happy category. So that is great. Um, we got a couple people that might be stressed out. I would just encourage you, if you're in that state, um, just to think about some of those strategies you can use to ground yourself to really um, continue throughout the day and um, continue positively. All right. So um, uh, if you've been with us before, you know we have a Padlet. Um, the Padlet link is the same for all of them, but we put new resources in each time. And then with each topic, it then becomes its own um, area in the Padlet where you can go back for the resource. 
um, and this will be around for a long time. And so if, if you're looking for the resources and you want to look back, um, the link will be the same. You can access the resources even in the years to come. Um, and um, social emotional behavior learning, if you've been here before, you've heard us talk about this. It's the systematic process of fostering those social and emotional skills in students, but also in adults, to create that safe, supportive environment with positive behavioral outcomes for all. Um, these skills are things that um, everybody needs. It's not just for our kids. Um, they're teachable skills, and we need them to navigate our everyday lives. Um, we really like to link that behavior in with the social emotional skills. I think it's kind of um, implicitly linked. We all kind of know, but just outwardly understanding that our kids and our adults need to have these competencies, these skills of self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationships, and social awareness in order to successfully meet those behavioral values, those behavior expectations, and in order to be successful members of their community, to be successful employees, um, and really just to navigate all things that come to people throughout their lives. Um, those competencies in that wheel, those are more constructs, kind of broad band things. But if you think about what skills go along with that, this is an image that we made. And so um, you could think about responsible decision making. What does that look like? Some of those skills you might need to have responsible decision making would be the ability to make responsible choices and evaluate consequences of different choices and setting boundaries and problem solving. And so um, this isn't an end all be all, just kind of a snapshot image. Um, but these are some of the skills that go along with those competencies. Um, and we work for Nebraska multi-tiered system of support. So everything we do, we try to bring back to the system. Um, whether you're building a school-wide SEL system, you might call it a PBIS system, MTSS, um, comprehensive school mental health, really um, whatever it is, it comes down to these essential elements. Um, and so the foundational work of all of these systems needs to be having that shared leadership, not just having one person lead everything, but having um, voices and input from multiple people throughout um, the system, having communication, collaboration, and partnership with um, everybody who's involved, including people in the community, using evidence-based practices, um, building the capacity, the ability, and the infrastructure for that successful implementation, the layered continuum of support, which we often think of that tier one, tier two, and tier three, and then also coming back to the database problem solving and decision making and driving decisions based on the data we have to help um, lead the, the vehicle, lead the decisions that are being made. Um, so when we think about social emotional behavior learning being for everyone, um, we liked this quote we found from Castle. Um, everyone has a role to play in school-wide SEL implementation, from the principal's office to the classroom to the cafeteria and school bus. SEL is everyone's responsibility. Um, so we're going to dive a little bit into that and what that can look like for varying roles. Um, but we wanted to start with this video. Hey, Mr. Q. Did you see that? Why would somebody do that? Please go into the classroom. No talking, quietly. Hey, Mr. Merida, how you doing? We need you inside. How do you think that makes us feel? I forgot my number. What's your name? Jordan. What's your last name? Carter. All right. Go ahead. School is hard enough. Come on in, sit down quietly at your desks, and begin writing. This kind of stuff just makes it harder. I said quietly, please. Who's talking? Is it you, Sophie? Don't let it be you. Don't believe me? Sophie. Please just watch. I'm not up here for me. I'm up here for you. Pay attention, OK? Now, somebody answer me. Somebody needs to answer me really fast. Every time we're annoyed or yelled at, or silence, the, the, the teacher takes away what's possible. No horseplay, no running, and especially no talking 
moment by moment. Ms. McGarity, your student's behavior yesterday in the lunchroom, it was terrible. Next time, silent lunch. Did you hear that? Stay in line and catch a bubble. I'm not playing. If this is education, we're in trouble. Bye, Miss McGarity. Frederick Douglass said, once you learn to read, you'll be forever free. The way it is now, two of the three of us will never be able to really read. It doesn't have to be this way. Hey, Jordan, how you doing? Good. Good. Everyone we meet throughout our day can make a difference. I've been waiting for you to arrive. All the difference. Good, how are you? Great. Hi, Jordan. Bye, Jason. Good morning, Jordan. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How are you? Good. Go ahead and put your number in. Talk with oh, us. I don't know my number. Not at us. That's okay. I'll look it up for you. Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. All right. Have a Teach good us day. what we need to know. That's how we get smarter. Well, good morning, Sophie, Janicia, and Jordan. And when you talk with us and teach us, give us bigger and bigger words. Now what I'd like you to do, children, is turn around and converse with your neighbor and discuss where the mother might have gone. Words that we can use to read and understand. She is prey for eagles, so she hunts at night. And that will take us places we can never reach without you. Remember, we're entering the learning zone. Now, how can we show our respect to the children and teachers who are working? We can walk quietly. Yes. OK, kids, so what I'd like you to do is continue writing your narrative, documenting your emotions if you were the baby owl and your mother abandoned you in the nest. What can you do? Learn all that you can so that you can challenge us to be our best. You would have stayed and assisted them in whatever they needed. Share yourself with us and show us how to share ourselves with others. Give us courage. Give us compassion. Help us find our own voices so we can become who we are meant to be. Why would you want to silence us? Yes, Jen, Jen in the chat said this video is powerful and I agree. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. I know in like the first half, your heart is just breaking like, oh, like, no, no, don't say that. But then like the second half, I just can't help but smile. Um, and I think it's the tone, it's the using people's names. It's, um, there's just so many things that are little that really make a big, big difference in the way that we interact. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to Jill. Perfect. Thanks, Mackenzie. Um, so really thinking about, especially thinking about that video and the impact that each and every one of us have on SEBL um, for the students and the staff that we're working with each and every day, we're going to kind of dive into each of those different roles and kind of explore some of the different um, just like responsibility, some of the different strategies that we might incorporate in those different roles to really target that SEBL as we're thinking about SEBL is for everyone. Um, so leadership, so leading that commitment to and really supporting um, the SEBL implementation being able to communicate SEBL as a priority, uh, being able to provide relevant professional development for all staff members, and then really building that foundation upon those essential elements. So if you think back to those that um, Mackenzie had just mentioned a little bit earlier, and then really the, the leadership team. So whether it's administration or teacher leaders, really ensuring that academic instruction, that discipline, that student supports are all really aligned with social emotional behavioral learning. And really even beyond some of those pieces, really thinking about, um, you know, just building those connections, really building that climate and that culture that um, ensure that safe, that students and staff are feeling safe, that they're feel, feeling secure, that they feel like they have those connections and they have that sense of belonging. And just kind of a few other pieces as we're thinking about the those leadership roles and responsibilities, um, really building on adult SEBL because we know that those happy and those cared for employees are going to stay longer. So really thinking about that staff retention. 
being able to incorporate SEBL into every staff position. So whether that's um, during the interview questions, maybe that's in the job descriptions, it's embedded within, it's in the recruitment process, it's embedded within staff recognition programs. Um, perhaps we're even looking at doing like an SEBL 101 for all staff as just part of that staff onboarding, that staff orientation. Um, and then really identifying what those learning opportunities, so like I had mentioned that PD, but also some wellness opportunities um, throughout having those check-ins. And so on this next slide, really thinking about some of those practices and digging into some of those pieces. So if we're thinking about those check-ins, um, this link, so the CASEL link is a great just resource if we're thinking about those check-ins. So um, we start each of our Coffee Connects. So Mackenzie started with that welcoming inclusion activity. We always end with those optimistic closures, but really thinking about how we can incorporate those into our every day. So whether it's for staff meetings, whether it's part of morning meetings within the classroom, maybe it's something that is just part of the announcements or the greeting, um, you know, for the entire school as we start each and every day. Um, but really thinking about, so with this check-in, that's a five minute check-in tool for administrators to potentially use with staff. Um, so maybe things that they have shared in the past. So maybe it's a sick kid or a vacation that's coming up, um, really utilizing those things and um, going back and checking in to help build those connections, help build those relationships. Um, I mentioned the staff meetings um, in being able to incorporate those welcoming inclusion and optimistic closure pieces. I love the idea of a check-in calendar. So perhaps for administrators or um, even for teacher leaders, having a calendar that they're identifying all the different staff members and kind of doing those just little check-ins. So things where they're popping into their classroom and just seeing like, hey, how's your day going? or thinking about those check-in questions, you know, maybe it was something that they had shared about an upcoming family vacation or whatever it might be, but really just seeing like, hey, how's it going? Is there anything that you're needing? Just kind of using some of those strategies, but also maybe even doing a calendar for like check-ins with students or check-ins with families, especially for those that may have something kind of going on, um, but really building that calendar out. So we are ensuring that we're checking in and um, really targeting each and every employee. Verbal appreciation for time, really thinking about those gratitude pieces, visibility, um, obviously an important piece, really thinking about and noticing and engaging in what's going well. So kind of going back to that gratitude piece, but also um, ensuring that we're really targeting that teaming, that shared leadership piece, um, making sure that staff know that we value their perspectives. Um, so all of those just important pieces when we're thinking about some of those responsibilities um, and in ways to incorporate from a leadership standpoint. This next slide is just a great visual. So the pro-social school. Um, so just kind of things to think about so that teachers own well-being, um, those SEBL skills are really crucial when we're thinking about creating that supportive, that nurturing classroom environment so that we can provide that classroom, um, those classroom management strategies so that we can just overall have those better outcomes, not only social, emotional, and behaviorally, but also academically. When we're thinking about teachers and really kind of how we can incorporate some of those SEBL skills within our everyday classroom settings, so offering that consistent SEBL learning opportunities, using those evidence-based practices and programs, incorporating SEBL into all of our academic instruction, and then fostering that supportive, caring classroom environment. There is a great link on this slide for modeling SEBL for students. It comes from CASEL, but it does a really great job of outlining each of the different competencies and then some of the skills that fall within. So if you think back to Mackenzie's web that she had shared, um, really thinking about how we can model and incorporate some of those different skills in the classroom. Um, so it just gives a great, it's a great handout to be able just to kind of think about some different ways that we can really model those skills. <clears throat> 
so you guys have seen us probably share before some of the different Nebraska standards. Um, we usually try to pick out a few and then really kind of target how those SEBL skills are really embedded and incorporated within some of those standards. So Nebraska doesn't have specific SEL standards, but we always like to point out how they really are embedded within. So here we have a few different ones and from ones that we've shared in the past, but we have a PE from grade 10, we have a fine arts one from grade eight, and then a science one from kindergarten. And so we just wanted to point out just some of the different ways that those competencies really are embedded within. And I will note that are those competencies, those skills that fall within are so interconnected. So sometimes we can pick out probably all five of those competencies that are really within, but we just kind of wanted to target just a few different ones. So for that first PE one, um, it is talking about like stress management strategies. So mental imagery, deep breathing, meditation, and then talking about team activities. So really thinking about those self-management um, skills as well as that social awareness. And I might even add in relationship skills, right? If we're thinking about team activities. Um, for fine arts, so being able to connect those different contexts, being able to kind of identify other disciplines through responding. So thinking about like self-awareness, thinking about social awareness for that one. Um, and then for the science one, being able to communicate solutions. So thinking about those problem solving skills, um, being able to look at like the impact that it has on other pieces. So really thinking about responsible decision making and then social awareness. So again, we might be able to identify ways that it's connected to all of the competencies, but I think this is just a great um, kind of representation and really helps us see how it is embedded within those standards. Um, this next one, so thinking about integrating SEBL in groups, uh, again, just a great way how we can target some of those skills and thinking about like a group setting. So that first one, so educators can make a signal to indicate that students need to check the volume of their voice. So here we're really targeting self-awareness. So being aware of some of those um, emotions, feelings, maybe the tone of our voice, the volume of our voice, but also social awareness, because how is that? impacting others around us, right? That second one, so students can be responsible for cleaning their space, transitioning to another activity or a location, um, independently beginning a new activity. So here, really targeting responsible decision-making skills as well as social awareness. So our transitions, how is that affecting others? Um, being responsible for that space around us, um, you know, being safe, things like that. And then that third one, so educators can expect students to work collaboratively, so uh, being able to work with others, that teamwork, right, on a specific task, and then also being able to provide that feedback. So that's really building on those relationship skills. So just another great example of the things that we're doing each and every day within our classroom, how we're really targeting those social emotional behavioral learning skills. Um, so this is a great example of those social emotional behavioral values. So thinking about expectations or values um, and being able to identify some of those social emotional skills that are really embedded within, right? So social emotional skills, behavioral values. So for example, uh, being a lifelong learner, being able to overcome obstacles, thinking about like what uh, competencies are really embedded within. The link here, so the teaching SEL within um, PBIS is a great resource as well, but thinking about maybe those expectations or those values that we have for our building and how we can really kind of pinpoint or identify what competencies, what social emotional skills are really falling within those. Um, so it's a great, it's a, it's a great resource as well so that we can really think about how we're targeting those pieces. Linda, is there anything that you would add in? I'm going to call you out for this one, our PBIS friend. Oh, and Mary is on as well. Yep. Um, this is something that we have not in the past been really intentional about, 
But now with the help of the three of you, I think that it, it's come full circle. And we always knew in the very beginning that it was relationships, relationships, relationships. And I think that this brings it all back together. And the piece to, to tie it to the academic piece is just is absolutely brilliant. And I hope that that is, and we saw a lot of that in the chat about how important that really is because it has to be in every classroom every day. Um, and, and that's just the bottom line is building those relationships. And also I wanna, I, and I almost said this at first um, when we were talking about, there was a slide back there about the principal teacher relationship. Mm -hmm. um, as a principal, I have to tell you, I probably used my counseling skills far more than any of the other skills that I thought at the time were probably more important. But, but those human relation, that human relations piece is ultimately the most important. Most definitely. Great points. Thank you, Linda. Mary, anything that you wanted to add at all? No, just that I, I surely agree. And I, I've been really enjoying working with some of my schools to integrate the competencies into their PBIS expectations because it's such a natural fit. And you guys have such a wealth of information and resources. It's been really, really helpful for the schools. Awesome. Thank you. And Susan, sorry, yes. Susan, anything to add? Sorry, didn't mean to skip over you. Many schools are finding that they already have more of an SEBL focus than they thought they did. And that, um, and the resources, uh, even the small resources like the video that you showed this morning, um, I can see where schools are gonna use that um, just to give a visual to people about how much difference the tone is when we're when we just acknowledge um, the students and call them by name. Most definitely. Thank you, ladies. <clears throat> kind of moving on to just some other examples and really thinking about how we incorporate this in each and every classroom. So this is a great example from a music class. This is actually from. Um, Emily's daughter's class, correct? Um, so this is just, again, a great way to really target some of those SEBL skills, um, but a way to do it within the music class. So they've identified music there and some of those um, key pieces. So making good choices, involving yourself, communicating with permission. Um, so just another just great way to kind of think about how we incorporate and how we target those SEBL skills explicitly. Anything to add to that one, Emily? Perfect. This is a great example. So from um, for PE and health class. So from Castle, another great link. This is a crosswalk um, thinking about health education standards and then those social and emotional learning competencies. Uh, so we do have a screenshot on there um, just to kind of show those pieces as well. So really thinking about, um, you know, like grade six through eight and then some of those sub competencies. So those are all skills that fall within those SEBL competencies. So things like impulse control, stress management, self-discipline, goal setting, organizational skills. So that again, just a great resource to really kind of break down how those skills fall within. Uh, thinking about our support staff and just kind of those roles, responsibilities, kind of how we can target uh, SEBL within those roles as well. So extending those opportunities to practice SEBL, through those relationships. You've heard the, that word relationships lots and lots already this morning. Um, displaying SEBL vocabulary and skills. So whether it be in the cafeteria, in the lobby, in the main office, in the nurse's office, just throughout the hallways, uh, encouraging that use of problem solving skills uh, on the playground, in the cafeteria. So all of the places. And so oftentimes like our bus drivers, our cafeteria staff, our custodians, they really are the ones that those relationships are super, super important, right? They're seeing them in, in different spaces and different places. Um, so being able to really build those connections, build those relationships with the students and the families and uh, the educators as well. 
we wanted to give you guys a few different strategies. So we have um, a link in here, uh, uh, some different SEBL support strategies as we're thinking about like on the bus, on the van. Um, and I love this link because it just goes through some different things that maybe we wouldn't think of as a way to kind of target those SEBL skills, but some just like great ideas that could pretty easily be incorporated. So creating a special name, a hand signal, even just greeting the, the students by name as they're getting on the bus, getting on the van, um, a great way to really incorporate those connections, those relationship skills. The three buckets one, I love. So maybe having um, you know three different buckets. That first one is kind of a, what do you need today? So maybe it's a positive affirmation that they pick up a little slip of paper. Maybe it's a coloring book, maybe it's a maze, whatever it might be, but some different options as they're getting on the bus. That second bucket maybe is a what's on your mind. So maybe something happened this morning that they just need to write it out or get it out, right? They can do that, drop it in that bucket. Um, maybe it's something that they have coming up that they're nervous about. Maybe it's a test or a quiz day or whatever it might be, um, but a great way to incorporate that as well. And then maybe the third bucket is like a celebration. So they have maybe a vacation that they're looking forward to, or maybe it's just a holiday break, um, but something that they could write that on there as well and then be able to share that. Um, some of the other ones, other ideas, the student mentor. So maybe trying to um, pair up or partner some of the older students with some of the younger students as just kind of student mentors or peer role models. Um, catch me. So being able to just really identify those good things that are happening. Um, maybe a student helped another student on the bus, or maybe they were helping them with their homework. So really acknowledging that, um, you know, even just sending like little notes of gratitude or calling that out. So great things to just kind of incorporate. Um, the thumbs up, thumbs down. So maybe it's as they're getting on the bus, you know, just kind of see a little check in, like how the morning is going, how they're feeling, um, maybe even incorporating. So like the little breaks piece is kind of incorporating maybe some music on the bus. So maybe it's um, a tough day or maybe it's right before a uh, vacation that's coming up, or maybe it's the day after Halloween. Um, maybe it's some calming music that's getting played on the bus, perhaps, or maybe on Fridays, the students get to choose uh, the music or the song that gets played. So just some different ideas of some ways to kind of incorporate targeting some of those pieces. And then the communication piece um, would be key as well. So sharing information with parents, with other educators, um, just really incorporating those, but I would also go back to kind of that PD piece as well and ensuring that we're really providing that professional development around how we can incorporate SEBL and how we can target some of those pieces for, um, for everyone. This is a great one. So thinking about cafeteria and lunchtime. So this comes from our NDE site. So really thinking about that whole school, whole community, whole child. Um, so again, the competencies are laid out on the left side here, kind of identifies what each of those competencies are again, so it defines each of them, but then identifies how we can target those within like the cafeteria or during lunchtime, some of those different skills that fall within. So another just great resource um, and some things to kind of have those conversations around how we might be able to target some of those skills within that time frame. Um, SEBL support strategies for security. So those positive relationships, um, really using those relationships as a strategy for promoting school safety. So one of our colleagues, Heather Robbins, she always says connection is protection. And I just love that. Um, but really thinking about how our security, our SROs can really promote SEBL um, for our students and for our staff as well, but providing that safe and supportive learning environment uh, being able to establish those positive and meaningful relationships with students and staff, proactively interacting with the school community, and then really supporting students in building those relationships. Like, what does that look like? How do we do that? Being able to self-monitor their behavior and then being able to express emotions in healthier ways. So again, all great things to think about when we're thinking about how we incorporate that SCBL um, from the perspective of our security and our SROs. 
I'm going to turn it over to Emily to talk a little bit about family and community. Thank you. I'm going to finish us off here this morning. Um, so if you were, uh, we did this Coffee Connect a couple months ago on the um, family engagement, um, com communication and community. Gosh, I can't put words together. But so if you haven't seen that one, or if we get through today and you're like, gosh, I would like to know some more or some more resources, you can go back to our Padlet, the video, um, and all of the resources are linked in there. So please check that out and share um, if you need to. But really just, so if we're taking all this time to build this into all areas of our school day, where else can we do this? And we need to make sure that it is our families know and our communities know. And so when our students go home and when our students go out into the community, they are practicing these skills and they are hearing the same language. Um, so if you're doing newsletters or if you have an app, finding ways to either share what you're working on related to SEBL or um, just sharing some tidbits and some resources. There are lots of examples out there. We give lots of example or resources in our Padlet so you can use any of that stuff to share, to go home. Um, and if our families are seeing some needs for their student or if they're working on things, we want to make sure that they have the space to be able to share that information with us so that we can, again, provide that um, well-rounded support for the student. So if a parent is like, gosh, I really see my student struggling with self-management, um, you know, making sure that we can then share some resources for them, but also how do we help support that student around that during the school day. Um, facilitating those community partnerships that reinforce SEBL skills. So we shared in that Coffee Connect, um, I think Jill had shared at one of her kids' schools that a parent in the who was in a community, so a member of the community, also a parent, um, was really, really enjoyed yoga. And so she provided an extracurricular activity um, after school around yoga. So for staff and for students to come and participate in that. And so building that connection, all of those kinds of areas, um, using those family gatherings as opportunities for students to share. So wh when can, where can you fit in for families to be able to come up and be a part of an activity during the school day? Or if there is, I, so I know some, some schools have moved away from assemblies, but if there is an opportunity for that to invite families and students can share what they're learning, um, student-led conferences, so students, again, can, can take some ownership in that and to share what they've been doing with their families, again, just to build that um, consistency and the continuation of what they're doing in their school day into the home and into the community so that our students, le again, learn these skills, know this language, and then can access those skills and the language across different environments. So thinking about extracurricular, so this, so all of these bullets actually comes from a research study of over 15,000 students from 28 different schools in 11 states back in 2016, but found um, across the board that when students participated in clubs, sports, and the arts, um, there was a positive impact on teamwork, dedication, uh, success, resiliency, time management, and relationships in all of these areas. So not just with their peers, but with the coaches, with their parents, with the community members, with sponsors. And so again, we are really um, building those SEBL skills for these students and for these staff and for these um, educators in all of these areas. Um, and so taking that one step further, so we have our extracurriculars connected to schools. I apologize for that. My kiddos are home today. <laughs> um, so looking at the sports, so much like our teachers and much like our sponsors for our extracurricular curriculars and our educators, a coach can play that vital role in a student's life as well um, and really be a transformational figure. So when you think about club sports and those um and, you know, those coaches that are with them for many years or in high school, that they're with them all throughout high school, um, they really have the opportunity to build that relationship over time. And so our coaches must not only be able to build and have knowledge of those sports specific skills, but really taking that one step further um, and engaging themselves in ongoing professional development, whether that is provided to them through their school, which would be fantastic. And it, But if it's not, or in addition, seeking out other support um, and training on youth development, on social emotional behavioral skills, and then taking what they're learning and embedding that into their practices, into their lessons, into team building activities, anything to, again, 
just that continuation of learning and implementing of social emotional behavioral learning across different environments. Um, so after school programs, so not just extracurricular, but what are some of those things that, um, you know, really have curriculum built around it for some of that extra after school programming. Um, this is a survey research done by America after 3 p.m. So in surveying their parents found that in at, at least 75% of parents felt that after school programs helped their students in all of these areas. So learning those life skills, developing social skills, learning responsible decision-making, building confidence, building a positive relationships, and even getting excited about learning. So again, we talk about how, you know, everything is so deeply embedded and academics is a part of that too. And so those relationships are the foundation for learning, but also when you are practicing all of these skills that applies to, um, your excitement and willingness and ability to learn as well and that academic piece. So on this one, this is again another survey of parents. Um, what are the, their expectations of skills that will be taught in these different areas and then where do they overlap? So at home, um, parents can be expect that their children will be learning respect and kindness and patience and how to learn from mistakes. Um, at school, you know, those academic things, problem solving, critical thinking and focus. In out of school programs, learning teamwork and confidence and leadership and perseverance. Um, and so then it shows this Venn diagram shows where that overlaps. And really, this I this is a great survey. And this makes sense when you think about it logically that they're learning these skills in these different areas. But how fantastic if we can, you know, use all of those social emotional behavioral learning skills in all of these areas again. So that is the same across different environments. Um, and kids know what is expected of them in all areas. And we really build, like we talk about, you know, those happy, healthy, successful human beings. This is a resource put together from um, NDE and NEMTSS, lots of different departments at NDE to put together some quick grab and go resources for you. So um, this, there's a link on here to the PDF link, other resources from the NDE site. Um, and some of the resources will be like, we will have the same on some of our padlets, but a, another great just kind of grab and go resource for you, for yourself, for your classroom to share with your staff. Um, so that is linked um, on here and in the padlet for you as well. And then we are short on time. So the exit ticket, I think somebody will put that in the chat if they haven't already, if you need to go, please. I even if you just fill out like one thing and that is like something you want us to cover or something you wish that we did in the future because that is how we really build this um, community. And so we want again, this to be for you. And so what do you need? What would be helpful for you? So if you could add those things in there, um, that is super helpful. We like to know that what we're doing is working and that you enjoy coming and that's all great, but really it's um, the changes you would like to see or the topics you would like to see that really help us grow and make this something um, even better. Our next Coffee Connect is December 7th. We are almost done with our fall Coffee Connects, which, which seems um, crazy that we're already here. So we have our spring dates in here for our save the date. Um, look for topics to come soon on that. So, um, and registration to come soon. So we wanted to get that out to you. That's in the slide deck. But then um, I do just want to ask before we do our optimistic closure and send you guys off, if you have a moment to stay um, really like for these different professional areas we talked about today, paraprofessionals, um, all of our support staff, our security and SROs, is there professional development and professional learning you are intentionally doing for these areas? Um, and what might that look like if you are or are you? Have you thought about this and what that might look like? Um, we would love to hear from anyone or drop it in the chat. I'll give it a little bit of time for people to put thoughts together. Okay, if anyone's typing, we'll look for those to come across, but also thank you, Mackenzie, for showing our Padlet. Um, again, chock full of resources, hopefully organized in a way that is helpful for you to find what you need. And again, all of the previous ones are on there. And then, um, for our optimistic closure, as we send you off today, just thinking about all of the different um, groups we talked about today, um, is there a way that you can intentionally share some gratitude with them um, during the last half of this month where we really focus on 
giving thanks and gratitude um, for what they are doing to help promote SEBL and relationships and supporting your staff and your students in your schools. Again, you can reflect on it, you can drop in the chat. We like to hear other voices than just the three of ours. <laughs> All right, we have kept you over. So if you need to go, please feel free to log off and go. If you have anything left you want to share or talk about with us afterwards, we'll hang on for a few minutes. Again, exit ticket. Um, we love any feedback you can put in there and hope you guys have a great week or so until we get to Thanksgiving and we are coming up on some breaks here soon. So I'm thankful for all of you for joining us this morning. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.